You're watching Two Button Crew. Go Power Up Dudes, yeah! Nintendo fans, unite. Yes. We've got some good news for you guys today. And it wasn't as big as like two weeks ago when it was Nintendo Direct. And it's not as big as last week when it was Labo. Yeah. But we've got some smaller stars. Yeah, some indies. Some indies to talk about today. Yes. Um, I'm excited about this. There are some, some good news. Some weird news. Yes. And just news news shall we the weird news is seven billion humans is coming to switch um and if you recognize the art style it should look familiar creators of world of goo human resource machine and that one thing where you burn things up in the fireplace What's yeah that called uh, inferno little inferno little inferno yes it's so weird that their company changed the name from 2d boy because that was really memorable yeah and they were proud of it they're like i can't believe we found a five character domain available so i don't know what happened but they're still making games they ported all their stuff to switch and now they're adding a brand new one this trailer you you guys have to watch the trailer for this video um it is hysterical it is satirical yeah it doesn't show much about the game no it doesn't and usually it doesn't. Like, I've noticed with these guys' trailers, I, I watch and I'm kind of intrigued, but I have yeah. no idea what the game is actually about. <laughs> but apparently, is it kind of like a sequel to Human Resource Machine, I think I've seen? That's the feeling I get as well. And Human Resource Machine is where you're doing, like, basic programming, and they teach it to you so gradually that anybody can do it. But, of course, if you already program here and there then it's not worth ahead. playing pretty much because <laughs> you already know how to do it this part was funny and the donald trump robot was, well, was very very <laughs> very funny i wasn't going to say it's not worth playing just that because maybe the story would make it worthwhile or right something. true but yeah so this definitely seems more human resource machiney where you will be controlling people yikes <laughs> <laughs> uh you, you guys have to watch it with the sound. It's great. Um, show these guys some love when yeah. this game comes out. Oh, is this when it's coming out? It's coming out right? on a Monday. It's coming out on a Monday? I don't know. <laughs> oh, it does say Monday. Yeah. Apparently that's when it comes out. Follow up to Human Resource Machine. Now with more humans, more puzzles, over 60 levels of programming, whole new language. Uh, Human Resource Machine was based on assembly. Lots of workers, blah, blah, blah. So it sounds like if you're going to play this one, you probably want to try Human Resource Machine first, which I have not yet. So I haven't either. That would be my first stop, but this is a reliable developer. Yes, great stuff. World of Goo, of course, a huge smash hit, one of the best games on Wii. Um, yes, first comment says, funny social commentary. Very good. Regard. <laughs> All right, so Mitomo is going away. I wonder why. I think I know why. Why? Uh, because not many people use it. <laughs> yeah, because we're friends with inner crew member Flapjack. Seemed like Mitomo was getting used all the time, but that was just him. Yep. So Nintendo had to sit down. They're like, "Should we keep paying for these servers just for Eric, Ashley, <laughs> yeah. or not?" And just two years after launch, they're closing it down, kind of abrupt. We only have until May 9th. And here's what I hate about Nintendo's mobile apps: so much of the content lives server side that it's not going to last forever. Like when Nintendo decides to stop paying for something, you just don't get to play it. So BS, like, the Legend of Zelda. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. So like when they shut down Super Mario Run, I paid ten dollars for that app. Since you have to be online to play it, it's just not gonna work. And See, I didn't know they ran, they shut down Super Mario Run. No, they didn't. I said they didn't? when they do. Oh, when they do. Okay, yeah. I was like, really? Yeah. Okay. So uh, now, now, does this say something about DNA? Who they're working with does this say something about their partnership that it they don't see it as like a sustainable long-lasting thing i don't know i think like if any game continues to be played and make money i think they will continue to use it 
like Fire Emblem <sighs> Heroes. They're not they're not shutting that down because it's no. pouring in money. So I think this is just like they're gonna do it as long as it is successful. I suppose. So it kind of goes to show that Mitomo is not the best first effort. No, it was cool when it first came out, and some people found lasting use in it. As a social media platform, I didn't find any sustainable use in it. It needed to be quick. Shouldn't have been 30-second yeah. load times oh, to like, no. like a post. That's not how social media works. No. Celeste making the big splash. Yeah, I thought this was really remarkable news because it's like a new master class level indie game has just joined the ranks of like Braid and yeah. the aforementioned World of Goo. Limbo. Limbo, yes. Uh, Shovel Knight. Like, the, IGN's not the only source that gave us a 10. I think I also heard Kotaku. Wow. And then maybe a PC Gamer, PC Mag or something like that. PC Gamer. Because so, this is multi-platform, but Celeste just came out on Switch and other platforms, and it's kind of like a, a platformer such as Super Meat Boy or something like that. However, it has an incredible soundtrack, and it has an awesome story, which is optional. If you want to skip it, you can, but it deals with uh, heavy issues like depression and stuff like that. So Celeste is $20. We forgot something. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we'll get that in a minute, I suppose. Or now, if you want to take over. Yeah. Um, what were you talking about? Celeste. Well, yeah, Celeste. Um, it's also from the makers of Towerfall, I believe the game's called. Yes. Uh, yeah, Towerfall, um, which I've played and is a whole lot of fun. Um, and if it's anything like the quality of that game, obviously the gr uh, graphics are very similar to Towerfall. Blast of a game. Um, this is going to be great. Yeah. Now, I was so excited for this game to finally come out because it's been showing up in little directs and stuff like that for a year or something. Mm -hmm. However, I just put in 25 hours to review Super Meat Boy, and it's like, I might probably need a palate cleanser or two between these experiences. Because they're just super hard platformers? Yeah. Scott's more into that than I am. I'll play them, but I only play so far until I realize I'm, I'm not interested anymore. Riddle me this, Batman. How am I so good at hard games, but I'm so bad whenever we play anything <laughs> together? I I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's the... Uh, maybe I just like completely throw off your mojo. Oh, with like the verbal abuse and stuff? Yeah, yeah. the verbal abuse might be, <laughs> might be too much for your little psyche to handle. In other indie news, two... Mm, what do you call big people? <laughs> Industry Giants? Uh, st yes. <laughs> Nindustry Giants. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, Nindy uh, Giants, mm -hmm. Steve World Dig, <laughs> and uh, Fae Developers. Yeah, so Image and Form. Image and Form. And, and of course, Zoink Games. Zoink. They're both Swedish, remember. and they're moving in together. So I see I see the similarity in art styles. I see how that can, that can work, and... Um, as far as uh, Zoink's other games. Yes. Now, for fun, Simeon. Yes. That. <laughs> okay, let me try and pronounce this guy's name. I, I apologize. Um, where did you say these guys are from? Sweden. Sweden. I have a little bit of Swedish in me. Call Brian Sigurdsson. <laughs> Sigurdsson. <laughs> I, I think... Brian. Yeah, probably. Brian Sigurgerson. Sigurgerson. Sigur 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 Yeah, Sigurgerson. Sigurgerson. So there you go. They're they're creating Thunderful, and turns out these guys have been like sharing resources and helping each other do marketing and stuff for a long time. So basically. They're making it official for tax purposes. And it really isn't going to affect the kind of games we get, at least for now. Maybe they'll do some crossover title in the future, but we're still getting 
like Flipping Death from Zoink, and we're still getting the original Steam World Steam dig, dig on February 1st from Image and Form. And uh, we really like those guys because they have been good to us. Yes, they have. So I'm excited about what this partnership is going to do. I think it might. It might get them into like more events where you have to have a certain number amount of, of people, customers. Yeah. It might or yeah, the even staff. Staff. Uh, it might get them bigger tax breaks. They might have each other uh, QA each other's games and get them out faster. That kind of thing. It's so, gonna be great. Yeah. Ta-da! That is the news for today. Yes. Where to be news crew <laughs> apparently. Do we have anybody do we have anybody watching us on, on YouTube? Do we have any do we have any peeps? Not that they're saying. You guys aren't you guys aren't talking to us. Talk to us. Because we don't want to be the only ones weighing in on the news. No. We want to hear from you as, in your thoughts as well. So even if you're watching the replay, leave us a comment. We will like it, heart it, pin it, or respond to it. We'll see. Has to be a pretty good comment. When you said pin it, I was thinking like Pinterest pinning it. I'm like, <laughs> I didn't know that you could do that to comments, but then Pinterest. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Thanks for being a part of the crew. God already stole my line. Oh so man. Signing out. That was the comment thing, oh, right? Yeah. yeah.